Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. On today's episode, I'm sharing with you guys how to do social distance swimming. We're gonna define what exactly that means and as you head back to the pools, as they start to open up around the world, how you can stay safe. If you're a pool manager, the questions you need to ask yourself or be prepared to ask when your athletes or patrons come into the pool, I'll be sharing this beautiful diagram that outlines how you can apply social distancing inside of a swimming pool, some recommendations for swimmers, coaches, pool managers, and of course, some alternatives if you can't get into the swimming pool, how you can stay active and stay fit. If you're new to the channel, welcome to my Swim Pro, where we share the latest and greatest to help you improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. If you're not already subscribed, be sure you're subscribed, like this video, and if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments section below. I'll also reference you guys to an awesome article that we have linked in the description of this video that outlines in way more detail than I can in this video all the different things that we're gonna talk about, including a little bit more detail on this beautiful diagram that I pulled from a resource from USA Swimming. Now, without further ado, let's dive right into it. When will I be able to swim? Is probably the most common question that people are asking themselves. And really this comes down to the local level. So make sure you're following the law. Don't break the law to go into a swimming pool or facility. Uh, unnecessarily. So make sure you're following the rules, you're paying attention to what's going on in your local community, whether that's the city level, state level, or national level in your country, depending on how it's all broken up. So make sure you're following the guidance and just know that the risk of transmission is proportional to the number of infections in your area. So we're talking about the illness, the global pandemic of 2020, and make sure you're paying attention to what's going on in your community, because even if a restriction has been lifted in your area, you wanna make sure that you're putting yourself in the best position possible to stay safe. And of course, keep the loved ones around you safe as well. So make sure you're paying attention to all of this stuff. And the way that we can solve at least temporarily this problem is through social distancing. And it is here to say, if you, if you listen to any of the medical epidemiologist experts, they're all talking about how social distancing is how you can limit the spread, flatten the curve, and prevent transmission from one person to another. When we're talking about social distancing, we're talking about keeping at least six feet or two meters away from anyone at all times. Now, ideally, if you just stay in your house, you're gonna limit the transmission the fastest, but that's not acceptable because we gotta get out there and we gotta swim. So if you have the opportunity to get into a swimming pool or an open water, just remember that social distancing is the best way that you can prevent transmission from yourself to other people or in, or receiving the infection from anyone else. If you haven't already seen the interview I did with Dr. Paul Thomas, where we talk about the, the illness and social distancing, make sure you check it out, linked in the description below. I also did a whiteboard Wednesday on the coronavirus. Make sure you check that out, also linked in the description below. Now, once you know that the pool is open, uh, is it safe to swim now or at any point during this global pandemic? And there's a few things you need to consider and the questions that you should ask of the swimming facility that you go to. So according to the CDC, there's no evidence that COVID-19 will spread through pools and hot tubs. Now, just because there's no evidence that this can spread through the actual facility, the bigger thing you need to pay attention to is that the locker rooms, doors, and common area that's used by other people is where the transmission can actually occur. Because there's other people sharing the space, that's something you need to pay attention to. As a result, unless you have a private swimming pool in your backyard, if you do, that's awesome, let us know in the comments below. Most people will be swimming in a shared facility. So this is where you really need to pay attention to this. Here are four questions to ask your pool operator. And if you're the pool operator, these are questions you should have the answers to because you're gonna expect them from patrons and athletes, parents of swimmers, all that stuff. The first question you should know is what and how are you cleaning the pool in the pool area? Obviously the pool has a certain protocol that is upheld all the time, but what are you doing potentially beyond that or to make sure that you're up to standards? And also the pool area trying to keep things clean and tidy. So that's really important to understand what's going on there. Another question is how will social distancing be enforced at the facility? So just because you know what social distancing is and you're gonna abide by keeping two meters separation from yourself and anyone else at all times, you're not gonna touch anything, not everyone is on the same page as you. So make sure you understand at the facility, does it require wearing a mask? At what point can you take the mask off to enter the facility? Are they gonna be cleaning anything? If someone doesn't follow these rules, are they gonna kick them out? Are they gonna do anything about that? So make sure you understand this at your facility because there will definitely be different levels of strict over there. And then we talk about what will you do if someone tests positive. This is really important because if you find out someone tests positive, what is the level of contact uh, tracing and testing that will happen 
for anyone who was ever in that facility. So are you keeping track of who enters the pool, who doesn't enter the pool, at what time of day are people actually using the facility? So if someone tests positive, how can you go back and look at all the potential people who were in the facility at the same time or relatively before that person actually tested positive? That's something that's really important to keep in mind. If you're a pool operator, you definitely need to know and have a plan for what you're gonna do there. And the fourth question is, how will I stay safe and my family stay safe? And really there should be you know, signs, newsletters, communication, something the pool should be putting out and making very transparent and communicating, allowing people to understand how they're gonna feel safe. Ideally, all these questions have been answered in the flyers and things that you see at your facility. And if you don't see them, you need to start asking questions. You need to figure out what the game plan is. Now, how do you manage risk if you are the person actually running the pool? If you're a coach, pool manager, or parent, or concerned patron in the community, how do you make sure that things are they're on point? So what you need to do is you need to think about eliminating low ventilated spaces that prevent social distancing. The most obvious example is the locker room. So any kind of a confined space where it's really almost impossible to keep a two meter radius from any individual at any period of time, that's something that you need to either eliminate or figure out how to expand. So maybe there's a way that you can actually open up a locker room. I'm not really sure, it depends on your facility. A lot of facilities will just eliminate locker rooms altogether. So that's the consideration. Um, there also needs to be an increase in water sanitation levels. So we're looking at two parts per million in that chlorine level. I believe normally it's around 1.5 ppm. So the, the chlorine and the chemical balance level. So ideally the pool operator knows what they're doing and you gotta make sure you're on point two parts per million. Uh, create visible markers on the pool deck. Now we're gonna talk about the pool diagram here, but, and I do have X's as the swimmers as they represent. This is 27 swimmers in a 25 meter pool. That's six lanes. Each lane is eight feet wide. And what I don't have on this drawing is actually the markings that are almost as important out of the water. So if you have a lot of people that are trying to get into a pool, maybe you only have one athlete per lane. Even then, where are people hanging out before they get in the pool on the pool deck. And so making sure you have clear markings on the pool deck so people know where they should be standing, they know where they should be if they're about to get in the pool, if they are in the water and they're exiting the pool, maybe there's a dotted line or a path or cones or tape or something on the ground that's very clearly defined so people don't have any confusion, they're not accidentally walking into each other, which believe it or not can actually happen in any scenario. Uh, and a pool just makes it even more complicated with water and all that stuff. So make sure you have clear markings on the pool deck. And of course, ensure proper PPE. You know, if you have lifeguards, you gotta make sure that they're, they have the right equipment. You gotta make sure if you're gonna make your athletes or patrons, if, if you're a swimmer going to a pool, if you need to wear a mask, you need to make it very obvious at what point can you take the mask off before you get in the water. What is your rule on equipment? So making sure all these things are really defined. And as a swimmer going to the pool, you should know all of this ahead of time. So you don't have to walk up to other people and ask them. Really, although swimming is a solitary thing that you do in the water, unfortunately in the time being, when you're out of the water on the pool deck, it's also gonna have to be a semi-solitary thing where you're not close to other people. You can talk to other people, but you should really be coming to the pool, get in, do your business, and leave immediately, especially because most locker rooms will not be available. So if you are a swimmer, here are some recommendations for swimmers. Uh, number one, the most obvious, is make sure you still wash your hands. Even though you might be fine in your house and then you go and you leave, still wash your hands before you get in the pool, when you leave the pool. You know, of course, you're gonna, you potentially might take a shower. Depends on what your facility looks like, indoor, outdoor, a lot of different variables there. But yeah, as obvious as it is, don't touch your face. Don't high five, keep your social distancing. You can't high five someone if you're keeping two meters apart. You can air five from two meters apart. Um, and arrive and leave with your swimsuit. So you don't need to have to, you don't have to change at the pool deck. You should have all of your gear ready. You go in, you go out, you take care of business, in and out. It'll take care of a lot of, uh, of, of, of congregating that happens outside of the swimming pool. And don't share equipment. Same concept of the swimsuit. You come in with your equipment, you leave with your equipment. There's no shared equipment at a facility. Most likely you're not gonna be able to do that. So make sure you have your own gear. If you're looking for, my, for gear, whether it's fins, goggles, paddles, or dry land training gear, check them out. Link in the description below. You can buy your custom My Swim Pro gear there. And then let's talk about this, this beautiful pool diagram. And before we talk about this, I just wanna quickly note again that this diagram was pulled from USA Swimming's resources. They have a beautiful PDF. It's in a lot of detail. A lot of this information was from there. I aggregated from a lot of different sources to make sure you guys have the best information. But if you wanna get more detail, that PDF is gonna be linked in the description. You can check it out with a few different options for pools. I believe there's a 50 meter, 10 lane that can fit up to 60 swimmers 
based on how the social distancing works. And of course, this is a six lane, 25 meter, eight foot pool, eight foot lanes in the pool that can fit up to 27 swimmers. If we're talking about open water, we skipped over that a little bit. Social distancing still applies to open water. The same concept of, you know, you're breathing heavily when you swim. So that's the idea here. You want to keep at least two meters apart in the pool and in open water. Now let's talk about this diagram a little bit in more detail. So if you have the beautiful diagram, I mentioned beautiful, give me a like if you guys appreciate my drawing with the markers of the pool. So we have lanes one through six. Now if you notice, every other lane has a different configuration. And if you're a coach running a swimming workout, you're obviously trying to put as many people as possible in the pool while being safe and abiding by social distancing because you might have normally 40 people in a six lane pool and now all of a sudden you're restricted to either 27 or 12 or six. Some pools and facilities might only allow you to have one person per lane. It's great if you're a master swimmer and you enjoy having your own space, that's perfect. You don't wanna share the lane with anyone anyway. If you're a coach trying to run a workout, this can be devastating. So you might have to shorten your workouts, get creative with the practice schedule and what you actually do in the session. But when we're talking about physical distancing in the swimming pool, if you notice lanes one, three, and five have a, the same configuration as each other, and lanes two, four, and six also have the same configuration. And if you think about it, if you, if you ignore half of the X's, if you just pay attention to the diving block side, if we look at lane two, these are eight foot lanes. So to maintain social distancing, we're gonna keep two swimmers in the corner of the lane basically, and we're gonna push them apart. So there is six feet there, two meters, uh, if it's a two and a half meter lane, and really make sure that the swimmers are staying in the corner, whether they're circle swimming or doing whatever it is in the actual swimming part, but when they're at the wall and they're breathing and resting and the equipment is on the pool deck, um, there's a few creative ways you can go about that. We'll talk about that in a second, but make sure that you're in the corner of the lane as it hits the wall. And then in the lane next door, so lane one and lane three, the X, the next swimmer is gonna be between the wall and the flags, which is five meters out. So that's at least two meters out closer to the flags. And they're gonna be hovering out there. They can't be at the wall unless they're in the corner because these two swimmers in lane two are in the corner. So you can imagine this X, again, not drawn to scale, but you can imagine this X, this swimmer is in the corner all the way there. So this swimmer in lane one cannot be all the way on the wall unless they're in the corner. So in lanes one, three, and five, we're gonna push these swimmers about three meters off the wall, closer to the flags, which is five meters. And then we're gonna just replicate this on the opposite side. So we're gonna flip it over on the opposite side, shuffle the lanes down one, and it's the same thing. Then in the middle of the pool, we can have two swimmers sort of bobbing, floating. If you have a pool that you can stand everywhere, that's even easier. Otherwise, you're gonna have swimmers rotate in positions. And I had advised, and again, we're learning as we do this, because I actually have not run this in real life. Time will tell, but there are some videos linked in that article of teams that have successfully done cool social distancing practices that are working. So again, check out that article in the description below. But you can basically have different stations for swimmers assigned. So if you have more than one swimmer per lane, you can actually have the swimmers assigned to a position and that's like their home base. Kind of like think of like a, a baseball uh, tee, right? So you have the, the diamond of baseball and you have first base, second base, third base. You can apply the same concept here. So you're gonna have someone in A, B, C, D, or you can call it the, the zero meter, 50 meter, whatever you wanna call it. And basically just have everyone know where they belong. And then as you rotate and you start to swim, to avoid confusion, everyone knows what their home base is and make sure you communicate this language if you're the coach as frequently and often as possible. So that way you're not just communicating it when the swimmers show up, they have a chart, the diagram, they know what they can and cannot do. And again, there's no bathroom breaks, there's no changing. You come in, you swim, you use your own equipment and then you leave. The same thing applies when you get into the pool. Having stations and those markings on the pool deck outside of the pool will allow you to facilitate this kind of an experience way, way more efficiently. And you're gonna keep the athletes safe with good social distancing, keeping two meters apart at all times. So this is a diagram that shows 27 swimmers. Again, if you check out that link with the diagram, it's gonna show you how you can put up to 60 swimmers in a 50 meter pool. If you guys have any learnings from this, if you're a coach, you've already done this and you know what's working and not working, let us know in the comments. We'd really appreciate it for all the coaches out there that are watching it. Now, finally, if you've made it this far and you just tell yourself, you know what, I'm, I don't feel comfortable swimming or I'm not gonna be able to swim in a, in a pool and I don't have access to a lake for potentially the next four months or the rest of the year, who knows when I'm gonna come back to swimming. I wanna get back in swimming. I don't know when it's gonna happen. And I say no pool, no excuses, no problem. 
If you don't have a pool, it's okay. You can still stay fit. Of course, follow the MySwim Pro Dryland training programs in the MySwim Pro app, available for iPhone and Android. There's a number of different training programs from beginner, intermediate, advanced, structured workouts with equipment, no equipment, and they're all swimming specific movements that you can use to train and stay in awesome shape even though you can't go in the swimming pool. And those are similar to high intensity interval training. So there's definitely repetitions, there's, there's time intervals, and there's a progression to the workout. So as you go through the workout, you're gonna get stronger, you're gonna improve your agility, your speed, your power, and you're gonna still build that aerobic base, not at the level that you have in swimming, but you're gonna get pretty darn close. Now, if you don't have the MySwim Pro app, you should download it and make sure you subscribe. But uh, some other things that you can do to complement the dryland training in the MySwim Pro app are just staying active through different forms of cardio. So whether that's going out for a walk, a bike, a run, doing jump rope, something to keep active at least every single day, at least 30 to 60 minutes. Even if you can't get in the pool, stay in shape and do something to be active. Now the third option is tethered swimming, your stationary swimming. Let's say you have a pool in your backyard and you're just trying to stay in shape and keep that feel of the water. You can do some tethered swimming. Stay tuned for my swim pro coming out with some awesome content with tethered swimming, stationary swimming in a backyard pool or else. And endless pools like the master spa or endless pool, definitely some awesome resources. We'll link those in the description if you wanna learn more. And we'll be coming out with some more content and not only tethered swimming, but the endless pools and stationary swimming with a monster spa. And the fifth point here is to set smart goals. So this might be an opportunity if you really need a break from swimming to focus on something like injury prevention, shoulder mobility, maybe you just wanna take a mental break and you wanna focus on something else. Set smart goals for yourself so that way you know what you're working towards. It's very specific, it's time bound, it's measurable, it's actionable, attainable, and you're actually working towards something. So don't take this as an excuse to take off two years and get fat and sit on the couch. That's not what we're doing here. Make sure you follow a training program, whether it's Dryland or in the My Swim Pro app. We have an awesome training plan for swimming. It's the couch to 1K. We have the Get Fit, where you go from zero to swimming a mile continuously. Amazing training programs, all available in the My Swim Pro app. All of that information is linked in the description below. And again, let us know in the comments if you've done social distancing in your facility, if you're a coach, if you're a swimmer, if you're a parent, let us know because this is a community and we're all gonna learn from each other. With that being said, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Stay safe and happy swimming.